its institutions as, as well as uh, nature, our natural environment, but also there are things that can inhibit, can prevent, and can hurt businesses both large and small. And primarily they fall into two different packages. One is, y'all can come a little closer if you like, one is taxes and the other is regulations. And we're here not only in South Carolina but also around the country, particularly with federal regulations how they hurt business, inhibit business, and keep businesses from prospering. So in South Carolina, we, we're going to do something about that. And you see before you the, the heads of the cabinet agencies that respond directly to the governor, and two of them will be speaking in a moment. That'll be Hartley Powell with the Department of Revenue and Ray Farmer with the Department of Insurance. But in a nutshell, what this executive order does is, is recognizes that beside taxes, regulations can, can break a Main Street business. Not only can inhibit its growth, but can deter its very conception. So we want to reduce those regulations as much as we can to see that new ones that are promulgated go only as far as they need to, that they're limited in scope and purpose. Uh, if that scope and purpose uh, becomes unnecessary, then they should be repealed. So what I'm asking each of those, the cabinet agencies that uh, respond to the governor as well as the others that are in the state, and there are a lot of them, to review all the regulations, all the rules, and let's be sure that those that are in effect now, uh, if they are burdensome, too burdensome to Main Street businesses as well as uh, thriving entrepreneurship and large corporations as well, that they be changed, modified, or even repealed. And that new ones, new regulation, any new regulation should undergo what we call a four-way test. And a lot of people will be familiar with the, with the Rotary Club's four-way test. And so we have, have adapted that to this, and I'll just recite that for you here. Uh, number one is, we, the, the four-way test says, number one, is it the truth? Number two, is it fair to all concerned? Number three, will it build goodwill and better friendships? And number four, will it be beneficial? So on those, number one, is it the truth? Regulation shall be promulgated only for identified needs supported by fact-based evidence. Regulation should address the clear identified need for the regulation to promote the health, safety, and economic well-being of the citizens and should not be susceptible to misuse or abuse to provide financial or competitive advantage for any individual business or industry over another. Number two, is it fair to all concerned? Regulation should be fair to citizens, businesses, and the state at large. They should not unnecessarily burden one party at another's expense. Agencies should weigh the impact of each affected party and determine whether a less restrictive or less costly alternative could be utilized to achieve the same objectives. The agency should describe the risk associated with the problem the regulation is designed to remedy and consider alternatives. Number three, will it build goodwill and better friendships? What that means is this, any and all regulations should build goodwill among businesses and communities, minimize requirements, educate those interested, and protect the citizens at large. An overburdensome, unnecessary, or misguided requirement creates hardship and diminishes the people's confidence in government. Number four, will it be beneficial? Regulations should benefit all South Carolinians. They should not stifle our competitive economic environment, our ingenuity, or any particular licensee from responsible, lawful, and environmentally sound growth. Agencies should declare how a regulation is beneficial to all. And what we're asking is that when an agency is going through this process, that these points and the answers to those questions should be ex explained and be posted online. We're also asking that the, or requiring that the five-year report now required by law of agencies to, uh, to post or uh, to file concerning their regulations also be put online. So what this will do is this, this will open up the regulatory process both as it is beginning, as it is moving forward and the regulations are being considered to anyone who has an interest. 
There are a lot of people in our state that can't come to Columbia and don't have a lobbyist and don't have the time to, to come and watch these regulations be considered and go to the hearings. Well, now they'll be able to do it online because it'll all be posted and they'll be invited and welcome to participate in the process. The code section I have in mind for the filing of the report is South Carolina Code 1-23-120J of the South Carolina Code of Laws. So we have the four-way test and we are going to ask each uh, agency through this executive order requiring those that report to the governor and, and encouraging those that, that do not do so directly to go through the books, go through the regulations, vet, look at, understand, and revisit every single regulation to see if it is necessary, if it's productive, counterproductive, if it's too much of a burden on any business, too much of a burden on the investment of capital, the creation, the innovation of our people. We think this will help. We understand that we have to have right now in South Carolina with other states recovering from the recession and finding ways to compete nationally and internationally, we have to be ahead of them all. We have done a good job at doing that. Uh, Governor Haley in 2013 issued a similar executive order. This builds on and expands that. There have been other governors who have participated in this effort uh, strongly, including, of course, Governor Campbell and before him, Governor McNair. But we've gotten to a point now where South Carolina is about to break loose and go way ahead of the pack. It's been recognized. We have all the assets, but we cannot afford to be held back by taxes, undue taxes, unnecessary taxes, and by undue, unnecessary regulations. So that is the purpose of this today. And now I would like to recognize, as I say, Ray, Ray Farmer and Hartley Powell, and we'll start with Mr. Powell. Thank you, Governor. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, Hartley Powell with the South Carolina Department of Revenue. All right, Governor, I have to tell you, I have to admit it, you got me. There's no doubt that the South Carolina Department of Revenue has a significant amount of regulations out there. And, but in our defense, tax laws, taxes are complicated. And so one of the roles of the Department of Revenue is to promulgate regulations and to help taxpayers understand how to comply with the tax laws. On the other hand, I have to admit that I think there are times out there when the Department of Revenue has issued regulations that are often complicated things, made uh, put an undue burden on taxpayers. So I guess what I really want to say is that I really appreciate you taking the lead here. I think what we're talking about here makes a lot of sense. I came from a uh, private sector background. There's no doubt in my mind that the tax, it's important to simplify the regulatory environment. What happens is if we put undue pressure, burdensome on businesses, there's no doubt that they struggle to survive. And also, I think if we're not careful, we'll destroy the quality of life out there for our citizens. So we've got to pull back. We've got to look at the regulations. So what I'm proposing and saying here is that I'm committed as the head of the Department of Revenue. We're going to look at our regulations. I'm going to check, look at our existing ones. We're going to look at our new ones. We're going to take time to uh, eliminate burdensome, uh, redundant ones. And I want to simplify the complex ones. All that being said, we know that we're going to continue with some, but there's definitely room for improvement. And I am committed and the Department of Revenue is committed. And the bottom line is, I'm ready to go to work. Excellent. So that's our remarks from the Department of Revenue. Thank you, Mr. Powell. Mr. Farmer. I'm Ray Farmer, Director of the Department of Insurance. And as the state's chief uh, insurance regulator, I fully support Governor McMaster's efforts to streamline uh, the regulatory environment and uh, uh, increase transparency for our uh, businesses and our citizens. My job is to foster a vibrant and competitive uh, insurance market and to grow the uh, insurance industry in our state. 
this executive order is an important tool to help us uh, meet those duties and I believe it will help us cut unnecessary and redundant uh, regulation so that uh, the business of insurance can thrive in the state of South Carolina. Thank you. Governor? Thank you, Ray Fong. Anybody have any questions? Yes, sir. <laughs> We'd like to cut a lot of them, but that will be up to the examination and review that I've described, and I can assure you that the this administration's cabinet is dedicated to this, as have others been. So we've made a lot of progress over the years, but uh, we're in a position now to where South Carolina can, can lead, the, lead the country in economic growth and free enterprise, and we have to be sure that we remove all deterrent to that, uh, to that kind of growth. Let me think about that for a minute and I'll give you a list, but I would invite the business uh, uh, people out there to uh, send us those, we've done this before, that we've asked to provide us with the examples or the specific statute or specific regulations that they think are, are hurting them. Those are the people that we'd like to hear from because they deal with them every day, but there are plenty of them. Of course, it's the same thing with state laws. We have state laws that are outdated and really have no application anymore, but, uh, but the circumstances that those laws were designed to, uh, to address are, are gone. It, things about bringing horses into public buildings and things like, well, nobody does that anymore, so you don't need, you know, it's not really an issue, but these regulations are, Someone said that those regulations in a bureau bureaucracy are the closest thing uh, to eternal life on earth. And we will review them all and eliminate or reduce those that are ineffective or unnecessary. Yes, sir. No, it's five years, but it does not have to be posted online we'll have it posted online. And also every time any agency is proposing or, or, or considering a regulation, we will have that posted online as well as the rationale supporting it. And we would like to hear the reaction of the, of the citizens and the people that are directly affected. Everybody is affected indirectly by all of these regulations, even if you're not in that particular area of activity. But uh, we want to hear from people, and particularly those who, who have to deal with them, and we expect to, and that's why we're putting all this online all the time, anytime one is, is proposed. And there are dozens of agencies that, of course, are not under your control. What do you expect them to do with We will encourage them to participate to the fullest extent, just as these cabinet agencies are. It's good for business. Every, every agency, every office in the state government is there for one purpose, and that's to keep the people of South Carolina growing in their prosperity, to unleash their innovative spirit, to raise their families, to, to have good uh, educations and good jobs, and to be happy in this greatest of all states. So since we all have the same goal, we all ought to be doing the same thing, and we'll encourage them to participate. Well, circum circumstances change, but also the state is growing at a, at a great pace. There, there, are, there are towns and communities that have expanded so much you hardly recognize them just in the last two or three years. The, the Governor Haley issued that executive order in 2013, and I would say that the, the economic growth in this state uh, since then has, has, uh, has accelerated. And so we want, we're trying to keep up, not only keep up, but keep ahead. And I, I, pres, I, I would expect that there'll be other executive orders issued on the same subject uh, as we go forward. Uh, I don't, I think they, that was for a limited purpose. That limited purpose. And it, I think he's mimicking us. Uh, no, I, I, they say great minds think alike. It's a good idea. I, I presume that their governors and other executives are, 
that are, are doing the same kind of thing. I can say that in the, the visits that I've, I've had with the president and people in the White House and the, and the administration, they're all, everybody is thinking in this direction. And, and actually, that, that's what it's going to take. It's got to be not just the state governments, but the, it has to be the, the federal government as well, because the federal government is full of regulations. No, no business has recently told me that, but I have heard many businesses complain of regulations. I have heard them complain of, of, of taxes or be concerned about taxes and regulations. I can't at the moment recall any particular regulation, but I've heard countless businesses uh, recently and over the years express concern and regret about the, some of the, the uh, regulations that they believe are unnecessarily reducing our competitive edge, their expansion, their investment, and the creativity of their people. Any more questions? Thank you. We are studying the bill. Off topic questions, you guys. Off topic later. Thank you very much. Right now, we're just going to bring the cabinet up Right. Good job. Show them. I'm going to show them. Oh, we got Uh, we're studying the bill. We need to be sure we need to use the, the old, the, the carpenter's maxim, which is measure twice, cut once. And we do not want to do anything to put more of a burden, an unnecessary burden, on the taxpayers. As I said earlier, it's taxes and reg regulations that inhibit growth, inhibit investment, inhibit progress, inhibit creativity. But, but this, the, this executive order is a, a product of, of the vision that, that I have and my cabinet have, my administration has for the future of this state. Uh, I remember Governor Campbell uh, vividly remember some of his actions and also, of course, most recently Governor Haley and I've read about the innovative approach taken by Governor McNair. So this has been a constant thing, but the world has changed. We're now in an international economy We've got businesses from all over the world thinking of coming to South Carolina. We've got people in South Carolina who want to invest and want to grow. So this executive order to, today reflects a new approach and a new vision of the future of South Carolina. I do indeed. It, again, we, we just we cannot keep expecting the taxpayers to pay for inefficiency and bad decisions and missteps and diversion of, of money from things that are important to other things. And it is it's confirmed and agreed that of the 600 and something million that comes in from the gas tax, the estimate is the next year it'll be about 636. Much of that money does not go to roads at all. The average citizen out there is highly stunned to learn that the gas tax is not spent on the roads. Most, of, most people that have studied it, and it's a complex subject because the money is shifted all around and comes in from the federal government, the state government, it's, it's sometimes it's a little complex to follow the money, but at least 25% never touches any kind of a road. And maybe another 25%, maybe less, maybe perhaps more, has been going to roads that are not the primary highways in South Carolina. They go into local roads, some's going to the interstates. Well, those are not where the problems are. Our problems are with the primary road system. 
And if we put all of the money that comes in from the current gas tax on that system, we will be fine. That is enough money. That is, the new taxes that have been proposed will raise about as much money as the amount of money that we are misspending or diverting. So why should we raise taxes again on the people of South Carolina when we have the money, we just need to spend it properly? So that's a, that's a, uh, it's a very important question. Everyone wants to fix the roads. I don't think there's anyone who, who believes that that is not our number one priority, number one at this time. Uh, but the question is, where do we get the money? The best answer is get it out of the funds that are coming in and over time phase out those projects and those entities that are getting the gas tax money that should be getting funded from other ways. Reform, reform and tax relief would be great, but not an increase in taxes. Yes, ma'am? Sure. If it provides for reform of the Department of Transportation, the State Infrastructure Bank does not raise any taxes, and uh, that would be fine with me right there. And if someone wants to reduce another tax, that would be fine with me as well. But, I, but given the current climate and the positions being taken by the leaders and by the legislature, I don't think that's going to happen uh, today, it might happen sometime later. But I, we don't. We just have to quit imposing more and more taxes on the people of South Carolina. A lot of people are just barely making it. They're trying to become airborne and they can't get up because there's another tax, another tax, another regulation. There are a lot of people that buy gas every day to put in the trucks, mechanics, plumbers, carpenters, a lot of small business people, a lot of young people going to two and three jobs trying to work their way through school. They just can't pay any more taxes. And the point is they shouldn't have to. The money is there. We're bringing the money in. We're just not putting it on the roads. Last question for Sean. Uh, yes, salaries need to be higher. We do need to have uh, more offices. We, we, uh, but the question is, where does the money come from? Uh, I think Director Sterling is highly experienced and qualified and is doing a splendid job. Everyone knows that prisons are tough places and things happen in prisons that don't happen in other places. And we just, we have to learn to expect that. But, uh, but we also have to do all we can to see that our prisons are run well and as much safety as we can provide needs to be provided. But they will, they will never be a, a totally, totally safe place. But again, it's a, question, it's a question of money. Where does the money come from to do these things? We have many needs. We, we're not gonna tax the people, we're going to have enormous economic growth in the next few years and, and we are expecting more and more money to be produced by our current taxes and we possibly could lower some at some at, at some time but we just we can't be spending money on all the things that we'd like to because we just don't have the money at this moment